Remember Job's story in the Bible? Remember his poetry? Well, in my case, I lost my children and grieve every day. Every day I grieve. I have to cry like this. I'm sorry. I know many of you won't like to see me this way, in this state. But understand this, I have to cry like this. I have to cry like this to release these unhealthy toxins inside. Memories of nothing. Just this moment, questioning. Do I appreciate where I am? I'm sinking. These tears will make Justin cry me a river. I'm a black woman with the capacity and heart to care for my children. And firstly, I would like to say no drugs or alcohol or abuse was mentioned anywhere in court about me. This was never the case anywhere in the reports. So why did you take them? And you can't say I'm mentally unable to cope because I need cognitive behavioural therapy. Cognitive behavioural therapy, aka CBT. Because professionals have assessed me and the report says I have no mental health issue. This is what the report said. After you made that order in court to say my baby should get adopted and that my children should be in long-term fostering. I went to seek help from my GP thinking there would be some some type of hope. Oh, let me let me just do what they say so I could get them back. But they disagreed. So you lied. You told me I needed CBT. You lied. Just so you can steal my baby. Steal my children. You lied. You lied. You lied. You lied. Because the report says I have no mental health issues. Which means I can never access CBT. So where is Angelic, Zizi and Mimi? Because they need to come home to me. I have accommodation that is child friendly and suitable. It may not be big enough, but it's suitable. This is up close and personal. This is an up close and personal documentary on my life. I will call this family law as I know it, no defence. Oh yeah, hashtag Black Lives Matter, just in case you thought for a split second that there isn't racism and discrimination within family courts and social services establishment. Who is Joel Ross? Joel Ross is a filmmaker who I met in Bristol at the Malcolm X Community Centre. He approached me, told me he was doing some filming for a documentary which he was actually um, filming for a course he was doing in university. And the documentary 
he told me it was called the waiting game and he explained to me what that meant and you know I just said to him well do you know what I have something in my life you know actually I have daughters who I'm actually waiting for and you know it just you know went with his story how many times have you been to a family court? Wow, how many times? Oh, countless, countless, countless. Um, we've had three set of proceedings um, over the course of six years so within the last six years I've been to court um yeah within the last six years how do you feel you were treated by professionals such as Kafkas and social workers I was discriminated against I was lied to, I was befriended, I was given false hope, I was destroyed. With their recommendations and, you know, their decisions in the reports, I was shocked. I was, I was disgusted with the behaviour, the language, you know, the lies, um, the repetitive, repetitiveness, um, and you know, just like missing the point, um, pretending, pretending that they did not understand what the issue was I feel I feel betrayed I feel betrayed um, and I also feel like I can't trust professionals um, because you know I've met a lot of dying social workers but I've also met really bad ones and throughout that whole process all it's taught me is social workers are only there to collect information they don't make the final decision so it does not matter how much they like you how much they want to keep you and your family together yeah it, it's not their last decision it's the managers and senior managers and you know the ceos and all of that of children's services it's not the social worker's final decision. So, yeah, I would say um, I definitely could never trust any professional. Um, doesn't mean I won't work with you. I will work with a professional. But in terms of, you know, what I've been through and how me and my children have been treated by social workers, by Kafka workers, um it's just uh it's just something that you just you just don't want to happen again so you're gonna forever feel like um they're not gonna be working within your best interest because they failed you so many times so um yeah that's my that's my take on that and also also Social workers, right, they would, um, they would do anything for a paycheck. They would do anything for a paycheck to hit their targets. They'll do anything to hit their targets. So as much as, you know, a lot of people that are watching 
this right now are saying you know oh your situation sounds so far-fetched are you sure you're telling us all the truth what you what you need to understand is that no story when it comes to children's services and social services there's no story that is far-fetched because they are target they're targetly driven they're driven to actually their aim is their job to actually take children and put them into foster care the only thing with that is that i feel like because of this whole you know the whole situation in the past with baby p victoria klimbe you know any story that's that's been made public in relation to um a child i feel it's because of that why a lot of good parents are getting bashed because they're trying to now prove a point but the thing is they've done it in a way where they're proving a point but they're proving a point to themselves they're proving a point to themselves that actually your establishment is fucked up and it needs saving it needs some high intervention it needs some saving because for you to remove children from a loving home a loving home is yeah that is not what you know a lot of people are told about social services so i feel for you to be working for an establishment who are supposed to keep families together that establishment has to represent what <laughs> your passion is all about you know and that that would be my message to social workers that would be my message your passion has to match the establishment that you're working for because are they really saving children or do they want the good children from the good homes because they're scared of the bad ones like there's so many questions when it comes to these things you know like and i feel like it's a deep topic i feel like it's a deep 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 topic um social services should identify the problem and help families not destroy families and make things ten make things 10 times worse by separating a good mother from her baby from her children separating a good father from his baby from his children because of the information that you hold of that person not necessarily because that person poses a risk to the child or the, the person's going to abuse the child or the person is on alcohol or drug misuse it could be the person handed in her tenancy and she became intentionally homeless she was asking for help for a very long time because of the the, the noise nuisance and antisocial behavior nobody was responding you know so she felt overwhelmed and she handed in her tenancy and she got taken back to court she got taken back to court after going through the first battle getting her children home she's now been taken back to court again instead of trying to understand a mother who's just given birth to her third child trying to understand why she's what made she do that try to understand why she did that trying to understand how she felt that doing that was gonna make her and most importantly her children safe that's not what it's about anymore that's not what it's about like family courts have become so like non-factual based like 
it's like half it's like half half facts half lies because you have the facts that yes this mother handed in her tenancy but you dismiss the other fact where she had supporting letters from her GP, her doctors, and from the social worker. You had all you had those evidence. So you knew actually something was actually wrong at that property why this mother would just hand in her tenancy and take her children to go and live with family members. But then you take her to court for that and then you try to make an assumption that she needs CBT because something must be wrong with her behaviour to do that. So it's a fail, it's a failure, it's a constant failure, it's a constant failure. And not only that, not only that, the black social workers who have tried to help, I respect you and I command, I, I commend you and I thank you. Because when those black social workers do come to help, yeah, when they're being sent from the white superiors to uh, and and they're actually trying to do their jobs properly you slander them you get rid of them and then you get a white social worker and then pretend that oops sorry there's no racism here you try to cover up the racism by giving giving the mother a black social worker and then when the social worker tries to do her job properly to help the mother and the baby, you get rid of her. And then you get one of your own. What was the main issue and why no help? The main issue was housing. Initially, they agreed to pay two months deposit and one month's rent in advance. However, it was looked over again by management after it was agreed and uh, management refused to pay a two months deposit. <clears throat> so unfortunately, me and my children were unable to actually move in to a three bedroom house with a garden, um, which, you know, it was initially agreed by the social worker. Um, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna sort it out with the landlord. I'm gonna sort out the invoice. You know, me and the children on the way to, the, to view the property in the rain, everything. And then I get a call back to my phone saying, unfortunately, I've run it through, but run it um, through management. And they've said they can't support the payment anymore. And yeah that's another failure again so you know um i mean moving on from that when i was pregnant i had a black social worker who actually you know um swore to me that you know we were going to help you because the situation is is solely housing and you and your baby deserves to be together. This is what, you know, I was being told. Unfortunately, just before I went into labor, they got rid of that social worker, got me a white social worker who then changed the, like, the whole plan um, and said that they wanted to remove my baby from the hospital. So yeah, like the main issue was housing because even the professionals said it and for them to put me through so much scrutiny over one thing it's like oh my gosh like 
you know, and the thing is, you know, <laughs> you know what makes this whole thing even more shocking and disappointing is that a lot of the professionals, you know, who had power to make certain decisions, they've been involved in my case um, since 2015. So I was very shocked that, you know, they didn't actually um, keep me and my family together. I'm very shocked. I'm very, very shocked because it, it just showed me, what it showed me was that it doesn't matter how small the issue is, if you're black, it's like you don't deserve a chance. That's what it showed me. And not, not only that, it's like, the children don't don't have a voice so it's like even if they're saying i want to live with mommy you know they don't even care and that's how i know this is not it can't be for the children because you've actually created um attachment disorders you've created that for my children not me because them being away from their mum is actually causing them attachment disorders. So, it's just really, it's just really sad, you know, that we have people in a certain position who can do more, but they don't do more. You know, they do, they do the total opposite, they make decisions that are not within the best interests of the child, unfortunately. How do you get them back? How do I get them back? I will get them back. They are going to come home. I feel strongly about this because this situation can easily be, easily be solved and it will be solved. I would like you all to read my petition and sign it if you haven't done so already because this is something that will really help because if you really think about it, okay, Family courts are secretive, right? Okay. Now, you have two people, which is, okay, the child's guardian, uh, which is Kafkas, and um, the social services, yeah? Both their lawyers, right? Will make a statement they make a statement to say whatever recommendation they think is best for the child right okay cool now the judge is taking into consideration what kafkas and social services lawyers are saying yeah not necessarily what the parents lawyers are saying because it's like in family courts i'm sorry to say but based on my experience um Sometimes I feel like, I, I have to ask my question, like, did the judge actually read my statement? Because I'm sh I'm so shocked that he actually ordered adoption. Like, these are things that I ask myself on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I wonder if the judge read my statement because for him to make such a draconian order, I don't think he, he read my statement, you know, or heard anything my lawyer was saying. And, um... Anyways, when you look at it like that, anyway, yeah, the, this is why the petition is so important because those are just two mouths, yeah, two mouths, Kafkas and Social Worker. Those are two mouths saying that my children should not be in my care, right? Okay, cool. If I can have, okay, right now I have about 130 signatures, right? Even that, 
even that amount is enough to say, look, judge, 130 people have signed, you know, I've actually given them a, a, a bit of the background as to why, you know, my, my daughters are not in my care and they've all signed. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, judge, but your Kafkas and your social services, I don't think they've done their job properly. They haven't done their job correctly because if 130 people are saying this child, this this mother should be reunited with her kids, with her children, with her offsprings, then something's not right with your professionals. I don't know, it could be caseload, it could be discrimination, it could be out of spite, but something's not right with your professionals because I've had 130 people sign my petition and god willing in time that will grow the amount will grow because more more people will see it and sign it so how do i get them back this is how i get them back by exposing the truth and as much as a lot of you may not like it these are my daughters, like, I carried them. I carried them for nine months. I'm their mum. They deserve to... They they deserve to live with their mum. Like, that's their... their that's their God-given... Do you know what I mean? Their God-given right is to live and be with their mum. I've never harmed them. Don't take alcohol. I don't do drug misuse none of that stuff yes i've had a bit of a difficult situation in terms of housing yes but if you want to go off evidential basis let's go off the fact that you told me that i needed to get cbt because you assumed that something was wrong with my behavior because i handed in my tenancy you assumed because you don't understand us you assumed that it it sub it, it has to be something to do with my behavior and when i left court after you made the adoption order to get cbt yeah i've been told i have i have a report yeah i'm sorry i don't have it at hand right now to show you but um i have a report right actually saying that i do not meet the criteria for cbt or the threshold because i do not have any mental health issue and again i was given counseling over cbt because i do not have a mental health issue and the counseling was suggested to me because it will help me to talk about the situation of me and my children being separated not because you know of anything else so again you know this case will be relooked at it has to be relooked at it has to be revisited and my daughter's human rights also have to be considered and be valued as well what support do you need to help win your case overturn both care orders granted to the London Borough of Sutton. I need your help. Anybody who's watching this, I need your help. I need you to look at my link, go to the GoFundMe page, donate if you can. This will help me to raise enough money in order for me to pay for a private lawyer or private solicitor. Um, because unfortunately, legal aid solicitors have failed me terribly and they have also failed a majority of parents um, because what it is, legal aid solicitors, um, legal aid family solicitors, as I know, 
um, there's a conflict of interest. So they've they've actually done work for the local authority and Kafkas. So it's like, you working for me, you're not really working for me because you're working alongside them. So yeah, like this is why I've created the GoFundMe page, which is very important. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to raise enough money to pay a private lawyer. Um, however, if that is not possible, then I'll be self-representing myself. That is what I will be doing. I'll be self-representing. Um, yeah, so that's what I would need your support for to help me raise enough money um, to get private solicitors. And also my petition. I'll be grateful if you could sign and also share with as many people as possible. At which point in your case do you feel that you were racially discriminated against? This is a very important question because at least people can actually see for themselves that there is racism within the family courts and social services establishment. Um, where I feel like I was discriminated against, um, racially discriminated against, Firstly, it was when I was pregnant with my last child, my, my fourth child, Angelic, and I had a black social worker roughly about two months before I went into labour. She came over to my, my home at the time. I was in temporary accommodation in Mitcham, and she came over to see me, and we had a long talk. She gave me lots of positive advice, um, she was just very helpful, you know. She told me that my older three children's case is to do solely with housing, so it will not affect my unborn baby, who was obviously in my womb at the time. She assured me that the local authority, Sutton, would not be removing my baby from my care. This is what she told me. She told me that she was going to help me with accommodation um, and provide whatever support, you know, I need in place um, after I give birth to my daughter. So about roughly, hmm, let's say, I don't even think it was a month. I think it was less than a month before I went into labor they got rid of that social, that black social worker. They, I don't know what happened. Um, they lied to me. They told me that she had an accident. <laughs> they lied to me, told me that she had an accident, yeah? When in fact, I contacted her and she was actually still in the office, yeah, working. So it's just that she was no longer working on my case because they got rid of her and gave me a white social worker. Now, this white social worker was very rude. Um, she just, she was just not helpful at all. Not helpful at all. Um, she laughed at me after I gave birth, saying that, you know, she called me when I was in hospital. She laughed at me, you know, asking me for my daughter's name. And she laughed at me because I gave birth on a Friday and they found out on a Monday because it was a weekend and you know she, the whole thing was just a joke to her basically the whole thing was a joke um so yeah like I definitely thought I was racially discriminated and I and I thought I used that as a perfect example because that is the truth you know um in relation to the case going to court and stuff you know there's, there's many different cases in the reports where you can see clearly there's been discrimination, not even just against myself, but against the dad as well. Um, this is something that happens quite
quite regular actually so yeah there is discrimination and racial discrimination within social services and the family courts definitely 100 percent what does legally kidnapped mean to you um for me i think legally kidnapped legally kidnapped when you hear that word legally kidnapped it just means it doesn't necessarily has it doesn't necessarily have to be a child related case it could be an adult related case because you know there's also adult social services it's not just children's so social services so um i feel on a whole as a whole there's many people who's been legally kidnapped um whether it, they're they're in a care home you know mental health and they're not they're just not being released even when the family is like constantly asking you know for them to be released and saying that they will care for them they're just not being released and actually they end up dying because they don't release them they end up passing away so yeah legally kidnap is is a, is is like it's a broad topic um however in my case um it is in relation to my daughters um i have four daughters but to be precise three of them have been legally kidnapped from my care um i say this because my third child she lives with her dad and um you know i get to see her more regular than my other three children um my three children who are in care um they have been legally kidnapped from me because I feel, I, f I don't feel like it's any different to actually call something kidnapped. That it, it's not any different. When you hear the word legally kidnap, yeah, and kidnap. Kidnapping, legally kidnapping. The only difference with legally kidnap is that it's legal. So they have to make it look legal in order to actually um make the public think that they're doing the right thing for that child um and it also covers their tracks as well it covers them but the thing is where it, where it backfires on them is when they have a case like mine for example and they know it was mainly to do with the housing yet they still took my children into care so basically you've kidnapped them but you've kidnapped them legally because you've you've done all your assessments but in doing all your assessments you haven't given me a fair trial um you haven't given me a fair, fair trial you haven't taken into consideration you know how my children are going to be affected emotionally, you know, the damage, the trauma. Yeah, it's just completely, um, it just destroys families, like completely shocking to think that a human being can actually do that to a family. Um, so yeah, Legally kidnapped to me is basically getting, or will I say not even getting, paying professionals to do to do a, a report or an assessment on the mother or on the father um, to then, depending on how much evidential facts or information of their background or you know, anything that's evidential based, depending on what they collect, they use that in court on paper to legally kidnap your children, which is very sad because you're supposed to be an organization that 
is supposed to protect and serve and the core is supposed to be a reliable source to go to when there's a problem the court is actually supposed to solve a problem when it comes to family courts unless that child is in danger or yeah unless that child is in danger you know or the mum like or the father cannot look after that child for whatever reason but in my case that's totally different like my children's been legally kidnapped from me um, not because I can't care for them. I can care for them. I wake up every day thinking, oh my gosh, like the time is six, seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm just thinking like, wow, what am I doing up? And then, you know, I realised that this is the time where I was supposed to be breastfeeding. This is the time where I was supposed to be making breakfast. This is the time where I was supposed to be doing school run, preparing my children for school run and, you know, getting them in the bath and all of that stuff so the routine <clears throat> is still there and you know i pray for all the mothers and the dads out there that um have unfortunately experienced this loss to the point where they've had a breakdown you know or You know, they just haven't been able to make it because, you know, removing children from from their parents is a traumatic thing to do. Like, it is, yeah. You don't know what that person is going to do. Like, so it's a very risky thing to do. I think, um, I, f I feel like the courts and the social services, they need to actually thread very carefully um, before they actually they make long-term decisions like that. Because you can't be saying that my daughters are going to be in care until they're 18 over housing. No, no way. No way. No way. Let's go back to court right now. Let's go back to court right now. Right now. Right now. Because your CBT that you told me to do, I did not meet the criteria for. So let's go back to court right now. You've legally kidnapped my children. I want them back now.